Hi, Sarah Eaton here to talk to you about publishing your academic integrity research in the International Journal for Educational Integrity. The journal was launched in 2005 by Tracy Bertag and Helen Titchener. By 2007, Tracy Bertag had become its sole editor in chief, where she remained for many years. In 2015, she moved the journal from the University of South Australia's Open Journal Systems to BMC Springer Nature, where it continues today. I joined Tracy working as co-editor-in-chief of the journal in 2020 and currently serve as its editor-in-chief. The journal provides a platform for educational researchers, uh, scholars, practitioners, and others to publish their research on a still emerging field of academic integrity as an area of inquiry for scholarship and, um, and scientific research. You can find out a lot about our journal from the journal's website at integrity.biomedcentral.com. I encourage you to take your time to look through the journal website if you're interested in publishing in the journal. What kinds of things do we publish? We publish a variety of different kinds of articles, including reviews, often done by invitation, review articles. This means literature reviews or systematic reviews that have a solid methodology and bring something new to the field on a current topic. We also encourage submissions of original empirical research articles from a variety of methodological paradigms, including qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods research. And for those in the humanities, we also appreciate humanistic approaches to scholarship in the form of conceptual or theoretical articles that are grounded in scholarly discourse. We also encourage case studies that share a case uh, and how it was addressed by a researcher or by a group Again, it needs to be founded in evidence because our focus is publishing scientific and scholarly material of the highest quality possible. We have a broad readership in the International Journal for Educational Integrity, and we publish on a lot of different topics. These are included, but I uh, include, but not limited to topics such as plagiarism, academic cheating, contract cheating, uh, academic integrity, honor codes, teaching and learning, and so on. But these are just a few of the examples of the kind of topics that we publish on. We want to be addressing topics as they're emerging because this field is changing quickly and we want to be a key resource for people who are interested in the hottest and newest research in this field. If you're interested in submitting your manuscript to the International Journal for Educational Integrity, I encourage you to take your time on the journal's website and carefully review the submission guidelines. Taking your time to look at uh, what's required will help save you a lot of time later on. In terms of how to structure your manuscript, I encourage you to look at some recent examples from the journal to get an idea not only of the kind of content that we publish, but also the structure of the articles. What you see on your slide here is a typical structure for an article. This isn't a prescription. Articles can follow a, a variety of different kinds of structures, but it's very typical that an article might have an introduction, a literature review, a method section, results, discussion, and conclusion with recommendations, for example, and directions for future work. Depending on your discipline, you may find that you take a different approach to scholarship. You can always contact me for information on how to structure your manuscript in a way that will make it suitable for peer review. As you're preparing your manuscript, be careful to follow all of the details on the submission page for the journal. Take your time to look at these details. These details matter very much because every journal will have its own specific requirements for how it wants um, submissions to the journal to come in. So for example, we accept uh, manuscripts in Word format or rich text format, uh, TEX, LATEX, and other formats as well. We do ask you to use things like double spacing uh, and follow the Springer guidelines for referencing, for example, and little details such as don't include page breaks in your manuscript. The more time you take at the front end to prepare your manuscript, the less time it will take you later on as you go through the peer review process. So let's talk about the peer review process. You probably can't see this flowchart very well on your screen. That's why I've put the URL on the slide so you can check out this flowchart on the Springer webpage because they give you a very detailed process about how manuscripts are, go through a peer review process 
from the intake and editorial administrative review, uh, and then out to minimum of two uh, peer reviewers whom you won't know. It's called a blind process. So you don't know who the reviewers are and they don't know who you are as an author. Uh, and then I receive the comments. All of this is managed through an online workflow system through the Springer system to ensure high quality uh, rigor with the peer review process. What you can expect from the peer review process? Well, you can expect that uh, peer review will be rigorous. The job of the peer reviewers is to ensure that the final products that we publish in the journal are the highest quality they can be. Don't let this discourage you or cause any fear whatsoever because we are a community of scholars and we're dedicated to making this the best field that it can be. It can be, um, uh, you know, anything from comments on little details of your manuscript to talking about broad concepts and structures. Peer reviewers will zoom in on each element of your manuscript, starting with the abstract and finishing with the references, going through your entire manuscript line by line uh, to ensure that it meets high quality standards. They'll ask you questions. They'll challenge you on things you may not have thought about before. They'll encourage you to strengthen your manuscript in ways that may not have occurred to you. The whole purpose of peer review is to strengthen the work so that when it's published, it is the best quality that it can be. We take a constructive approach to peer review uh, and because we want everyone to find the process, well, rigorous, but also constructive and, and useful. When you get your peer review, if it's if you are a new scholar or an emerging scholar, sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming the first time you get those peer reviews. So just remember that when you're responding to the peer reviewers, know that they're volunteers and they've taken time out of their day to read your manuscript and give you feedback on how to improve it. So you will prepare a response to the reviewers along with your revision. Sometimes that response will take in the form of a table, for example, in one column you might have the reviewers comments and then in the other column, uh, your response to the reviewers. Other times you might go sort of line by line, but make sure that you address all of the reviewers comments. Even if you disagree with them, you are allowed to offer a respectful rebuttal uh, if you don't feel that the reviewers comments made perfect sense for your manuscript, you provide your justification. And then when I see the manuscripts come in as the editor, I'll make a determination about uh, whether I agreed with the reviewers or whether I agreed with you. But you do have the right to offer a rebuttal to, to reviewers on particular points. But please know that reviewers are there to help you. Uh, and that's why they volunteer to do this work. Often reviewers are people who serve on an editorial board, for example. They know the field very, very well. They may have published previously in the journal, so they know what it takes to achieve successful publication in this journal. They are wise uh, and committed volunteers who are dedicated to helping you produce the best quality research that you can publish. And they're also dedicated to the journal and ensuring that it maintains the highest quality that it can possibly have. Do you have questions? Are you interested in publishing your uh, research in the International Journal for Educational Integrity? Feel free to reach out to me. You can contact me at the email address on your screen. I'd be happy to talk to you about your manuscript or your publication goals for publishing your work on academic integrity in the International Journal for Educational Integrity.